Okay, so uh, any further questions or um, maybe some something that you want to share about servant leadership? Um, see, one 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 challenge I think that uh, what Divya shared was like, what if people take advantage? You know that that is always there. Um, any other challenges that you foresee or questions um, that you might have? Okay. Um, okay. If there's uh, if there's anything, you can bring it up uh, in a later time as well, right? Um, let's um, let's continue. Um, no, there's a um, there, there is a, um, a workshop or a ministry called Lead Like Jesus and. Um, I and mean, if if there is one in your city, uh, maybe you can you know you can attend that. It's uh, I've attended one uh, like a weekend kind of a, a workshop. And I found it really uh, you know uh, of value. Um, talking about you know, how we make decisions, uh, the vision, uh, and also you know everything with the Lord Jesus as our example. So we can. You know, discuss some very practical things, like okay, it's it's not just out there or in there in the word, but it's something to be followed by um, people from all walks of life, and especially if uh, you know you you are in business, you are um, a formal leader carrying a formal leadership title and role. You know, uh, well, the the fact that it it can be lived out. Right, so it is. Uh, uh, it's very, very encouraging. So you know, you can, if you have an opportunity, you could attend one of those um, seminars or um, weekend schools. I mean, weekend workshops. Okay, okay. So now we just move on to uh, something which is um, slightly different. Um, so we've looked at what leadership is. We looked at the Lord Jesus uh, being our uh, being our leader, the example that he set, and, and the example that he set in various fronts, right? Um, so we we looked at all that, and and it will do us good to go back to it, or you know, remind ourselves about it, uh, because many times we get caught up in the responsibility, we get caught up in the work at hand, and uh, um, and then we forget. Okay, the big picture this is the big picture, right? Uh, it's good to revisit these things. Okay, so now. Talking about the big picture, okay, now that's the thing that we're going to look at next, which is uh, um, just a very important aspect of uh, of leadership, uh, and also, you know, especially when you're leading an organization, a ministry, or a team, um, it's it's a very important aspect of it uh, that we should be strong in. And also the rest um, who are part of the organization or team should be should be really strong in it. Okay, so what is this? Now we are obviously talking about this thing called vision. Right? Vision simply means in in normal terms, it just means the ability to see. Right? Vision to see. If you have a clear vision, you see clearly. If not, it's a blurred vision. Right? You know able to see clearly. So vision is uh, just the ability to see. So when, when we look at um, vision, we see, uh, you know, uh, in, in the Word of God, we see that the Lord, uh, you know, the, the gifts in uh, the Holy Spirit, um, supernaturally, He gives us visions. He communicates to us. God communicates to us in visions and dreams. Now, you know, that's... Uh, that is also something that we see, uh, but it's a message that is that is communicated to us. Okay, that's that's again referred to as vision. Um, but what we are looking at today is uh, something that um, uh, uh, something that that is uh, that captures what our life purpose is, or what is the purpose of the organization or ministry or team, right? Uh, a few words, maybe a few sentences that 
that capture what it is so that it becomes clear to us that this is why and this is what we are called to do okay so when you talk about a vision statement that is what a vision statement does it describes what i'm going to do or what we as an organization uh, will do or will become and uh, and and therefore it talks about what is our purpose what are we going to focusing on where we are headed right uh, etc so it's an important um, statement now why is it um, uh, oh before we go there let me just share the um, definition and the description Okay, so it's a it's a description. A vision is a description uh, of what church or ministry it will do or it will become, and it communicates purpose, communicates what we're going to be focusing on in future, and uh, it is a uh, it should be a call to action. Right. So, if we can ask three important questions about vision right if you say what okay um, it describes three important questions that we need to know as leaders okay about our purpose okay. what is it what is it that you want to do or what is it want that you want to become okay. that describes our vision the next question why right. why am i doing this describes our mission our values our principles why do we do what we do and how we go about doing it again our goals and objectives and the activities that we do in order to reach our goals right in order to reach or fulfill the vision how what are those things that we so we're going to look at each of these right so if you look at uh, vision okay, we see that it's uh, 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 what a vision does, okay, and we're going to look at um, a few things there. A uh, clear vision from God provides direction and guidance. A clear vision from God provides direction and guidance. So, in the context of church ministry, it it is true in the context of even you know for us individuals, like for a person, it is true in the context of. An organization or a team okay a clear vision something that is very clear and uh, of course we're saying that you know we rely on god we uh, on the lord we receive that call and purpose and vision from him right so in, uh, you know in other words we are saying okay god what is the, what is the big picture what is the purpose why am i here what do i do what i do and we, we're asking the same question uh for the for the ministry like for the church for the team like god so when 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 the lord and, and the purpose and the vision he's a source of right and uh, when the lord communicates that and we capture it and uh, and put it together this vision provides direction and guidance so it's very important okay Proverbs 29 and verse 18, where there is no revelation or where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. There's no boundary. Okay. But happy is he who keeps the law. So when the vision has a has the ability to give the direction and the focus and the guidance that people need. Right? Which means that they say, okay, this is the vision. So therefore, I need to do this and not do this. Right? As long as I'm doing this, I'm headed in the right direction. If I'm not doing it, uh, or if I'm doing something else, then I'll be going some in, the, in a direction which is not the purpose, which is not in line with the vision. Okay, so this vision is very, very clear. Uh, I mean, if it's if it's clear, it's very, very uh, it's important, and it's important that it needs to be clear, not only for us as leaders, but also for everybody in the team, everybody in the organization. Right, so it is. It can be as simple as if you look at it. It can be as simple as okay, here is 
this group of people and we are going out for lunch and uh, it should be clear where we are going right it should be communicated and we're going to look at that you know it, it, so it, it gives a sense of direction okay this is the place you know if it's um, you know you know name the place and this is where it's located the name of the restaurant and this is where it's located it gives a sense of you know where you are headed you know this is the direction it gives guidance okay this is what i need to do in order to reach there right as simple as that so uh, it, the task might be huge the task might be you know it's it's about changing the world it could be it's about saving the lost you know for a church but if we capture that in a few words the vision statement if we actually bring focus or it, it 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 could be based on you know the, the, the things that the burden that the lord has given you know, to you as a leader to you as a church when we put that together you know it it becomes clear so those who come and be part of that vision also get that clarity okay this is what we can do uh, this is uh, where we are going so it brings so much of clarity in whatever we want to do so when there's clarity um, then our action our steps that we need to take is also clear right um, otherwise it can be very misleading like just imagine you know if if you you know if it's just one or two people it's fine but if it's many then if there is no clarity then we will end up in a place or end up going away from where we are supposed to be going right if it's this restaurant that we need to go and if, if there's no clarity uh, and if that that uh, you know if that direction and clarity is not communicated then we will end up in a in a different place in a different restaurant and not in this place okay it's as simple as that right so a vision from god provides direction and guidance so a vision is important, right? And um, um, I, I remember that uh, as a, when we were when I was overseeing the worship ministry. So many years ago, this happened that um, though there was, um, you know, we we had actually had, we had a vision statement and so on. Um, there was there was a kind of misunderstanding about the vision, right? Lack of clarity about the vision. And uh, that resulted in a lot of confusion. There's a lot, it resulted in a lot of, uh, uh, you know, confused action, right? So, for example, the, the, the vision right now is the vision of the worship ministry is to please God's heart in unrestrained worship, to please God's heart. That's the first thing. There are three things to it. But the first thing is this to please God's heart. So which means that I as a worshiper or even a worship leader or a worship minister or a worship team, I personally need to please God's heart in unrestrained worship. Right. And the second part of it is to is to experience or to, you know, uh, be in the, in the manifest presence of God to experience his manifest presence, to encounter his manifest presence, and to lead others to it. So three parts, to encounter his manifest presence, second part. So the thing is, um, you know, in the statement that we had earlier, there was, uh, I mean, as leaders, we had the clarity, but then as uh, a team, you know, there was lack of clarity. So it resulted in confused action in the sense, okay, some people were saying, okay, I'm here to lead others in worship. Like, that's the important thing. Uh, so it doesn't matter even if, if I do not, you know, lead myself into it. It doesn't matter. But my primary goal is to lead the people into worship. Right? So there was a you know mismatch and we had to clarify it. We had to stop, clarify, and say, hey, this is what it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Isaac, you have a you raised a question. You raise your hand. You have a question. Accident. Sorry. Uh, it's it's by coincidence. 
Oh, I see. Okay, by by mistake. Okay, fine. Right. Okay. Uh, so Divya's question is: uh, uh, a vision can evolve over a period of time. Uh, is that right or is that wrong? Okay. So um, yeah, say yes, definitely. Uh, Divya, vision, uh, especially when you're talking about, let's say. Um, um, that's something that we're going to look at, you know, the nature of the vision. Well, there is a big picture, but there is uh, there could be uh, you know, an addition or increase in scope. There could be a refinement, uh, refining of the vision over a period of time. But the general direction, you know, and focus, uh, that is that is something that is there, you know. Um, so when we're talking about, when you're asking the question, okay, uh, can a vision evolve over a period of time? Uh, well, so let's say individually, you know, you apply it into individually and uh, say, okay, this is, this is where I was going. And this is, I mean, this is the basic idea of what I have. Okay, I'm called to, uh, I'm called to minister. Let's say, let's take it that way. I'm called to minister. And uh, uh, in, in this kind of a setting with these kind of people. Okay. Now, that is, that is the big picture. But over the period of time, there could be a change in the sense I'm minister, I'm called to minister to, yeah, where the, where the Lord expands the scope of ministry. I'm called to minister to um, people X, Y, and Z as well, right? Um, the Lord is expanding the realm of influence, maybe, and He's saying, okay, geographically, uh, He's expanding the territory, and He's saying X, Y, and Z. So it's no more X, it's Y and Z, and where X, Y, and Z are so different. Right, ethnically maybe, uh, so all that. So th there is a refining which is coming along with the vision, right? But the gen, the but the big picture of the general, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Divya. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Pastor. I, I just I had a follow up on that. That's it. Mm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if at all, okay, God wants you to lead, uh, in a you know, wider scope, uh. A certain section of people, but uh, over a period of time, you get to see that there is need in this area. Hmm. So the uh, the beginning, you know, the the vision when it started, it was focused on a certain section. But later on, when you interact with people and you're seeing that, okay, that is a smaller, like a smaller need. Uh, but hmm. what I'm seeing is a bigger need. Okay. Uh, so so uh, is it okay to do that otherwise you know there'll be a lot of confusion as you said yeah yeah yeah, yeah it's absolutely fine you know it's uh, because the need is an opportunity but as long as um, you know the lord is uh, there's some, some things to it you no know? like uh, okay is it something that uh, you need to personally take on or is it something that can be uh, taken on by someone else you know where you can delegate it to someone you know, all those questions are also there, uh, but as as the Lord, you know, graced you and called you, gifted and called you for that particular thing as well. Um, so, or is it is it a need? Is it just a need which is there, which needs to be fulfilled? You know, uh, but are you called to fulfill that need? So that thing, you know, if if there is a stirring within and you see that, okay, God, you know, uh, I need to do that um, because. Um, it's going to take time. It's going to take resources, and you're going to put all that behind it. And is that what God wants you to be doing? So, yeah. So as long as you're clear on that, uh, definitely, you know, we can say, okay, this is something that God is expanding, and it's, and yeah, you know, there's a refocus in the vision. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. Okay, so uh, so we look at we see that importance of uh, how the vision can provide direction and guidance. So, like this you know, worship team ministry example, so just completely changed the whole outlook. So, where there was a lot of confusion, I, I won't say confusion, but it was a lot lack of clarity um, in that particular statement. Right? So, we had to kind of rewrote. I mean, we rewrote it and said okay we, let's put it in simple language let's put it in simple terms and it brought a lot of change to the direction in which we were heading so we see, see that okay it's no more first of all it's about me personally you know this is 
basic thing, but then then the vision captured it and it communicated it, it became so much easier. Right? It's like how you change, you know, your glasses and the power, and then it becomes very clear. You're sitting there and uh, you know, and the doctor's at the clinic and then just puts these lens and then lenses and different lens, and then I say, wow, wow, this is fine, perfect. Everything has become clear now. You know, it's like like that moment, right? So vision actually brings that. Okay, a clear vision. Second thing brings light, meaning that there is a clarity in thought and action. Right? There is direction, guidance, but it, uh, here there is because of the 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 way uh, it's it's clear because of the, the what it is and. Um, what it communicates, there's clarity in thought, there is clarity in action. You know, the Lord Jesus uh, said, right, uh, Matthew 6, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your body will be full of light. If your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Of course, he's talking about you know, spiritual darkness. He's talking about, uh, um, while well, he's talking about the the natural functioning of the eye is talking about you know spiritual darkness but if you look at uh, the natural functioning how our eye actually gives light and enables us to see clearly so you can see where you want to go and you're clear uh, about where you want to go same thing a vision statement or vision from god does that brings light okay um the third thing that we need to do with the vision is we need to state it. Okay, maybe it's in our heart, right? Like a burden, like a need, something that is just weighing on us. And uh, but we need to actually state it. We need to capture it, state it. Okay, you know, Habakkuk two, uh, the Lord gives Habakkuk what he needs to do, and uh, Habakkuk writes it down. Oh, this is what the Lord says. The Lord answered me and said, Habakkuk 2, verse 2, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who needs it. Okay, the, the CV contemporary English version says this. Then the Lord told me, I will give you my message in the form of a vision. Write it clearly enough to be read at a glance. Right? Which means it's a, it's a it should be simplified. No ambiguity in it. Right? Could it mean this? Could it mean that? No, it's clear, plain, so that the one who reads it uh, is moved to act. Okay, that he may run who reads it, meaning it moves that person. Once you receive it, when you read it and you receive it, you are moved to act. You're moved to action, right? So that uh, should be. Uh, it should be stated. It should be explained. And like I shared, you know, the worship ministries vision to first of all to please God's heart in unrestrained worship, to encounter His manifest presence, and to establish the church, establish others in it. So that is the vision. If you look at the, the vision of all people's church, you know, for example, vision statement. Our vision at All People's Church is to be the salt and light in the city of Bangalore, a voice to the nation and to the nation. So it's a description of what we should be. It is a description of where we need to go, a voice to the nation, if you are not there already, uh, and to the nations. It's, it's giving you know, clear direction. A sense of direction, um, a big picture of this is what this is who we are. Identity as salt and light, as the Lord called all of us as disciples, that we are called to be this salt, influence, light, impact. So, in influence and impact for the sake of the kingdom, right? Bringing the good news of the kingdom, people getting saved, born again. Um, influence and impact in the city that is where the church originated, started, was founded, that is where we are, and 
as the Lord expands the voice to the nation, as the Lord gives the grace to the nations. Right. So that's the that's been the that's been the vision from day one, right from the time when it was eight people, right. And so, uh, what it has done in all these years has really enabled, uh, uh, apart from what we what we said, you know, direction and guidance, it's enabled you know, that we put concentrated effort, resources, time, in order to fulfill. And what it has also done is um, that others who with whom this resonated, you know, God has made, probably put the same thing in their hearts, right? to be salt and light, and so to be part of this big vision corporately. Right? Others whom felt the same stirring come and be part of it and saying, hey, I, I want to be part of this. I want to fulfill this in this manner. Uh, maybe consciously they didn't think about it, or maybe they did, uh, you know. But it's it produced a stirring and saying, okay, now since we are part of it, this is where we are going. Right? This is what we're going after. So it it helps to capture it. It helps to write down. It helps to do it in a very clear, simple manner. Right. The other thing, fourthly, is that this needs to be communicated. So. It, you know, it's probably in the heart, in your heart. Okay, you put it down, you write it down, you capture it in so many statements, write it down. But this has to be communicated to whom? You know, it is communi it is communicated. It needs to be communicated to whoever's part of it, as part of the body. Maybe it's a small team, maybe it's a family, maybe it's uh, you know your business. It's the uh, it's the uh, organization, church, whatever. You know, we're, we're talking about the mission. I'm sorry, the vision. So I'm sure you've seen it, right, in the organizations that uh, maybe you visited some organization's office and you see it in the in the receptionist desk or, you know, just behind that on the wall. Uh, some of these companies have that vision statement very boldly written there. Uh, this is the vision. This is what we want to do. This is where we want to be. We want to be pioneers. We want to be innovators. We want to be leaders, right? Um, in technology, we want to be um, pioneers. We want to, you know, uh, bring solutions um, to to mankind, healthcare solutions, and so on. You know, you've seen. So, so why do they have that? So that it it communicates. It is you know this vision needs to be communicated to others, um, and it can be. Uh, so that people can be part of it, they can know it first of all. They can be part of it, um, and it can become theirs, right? It, it says, okay, it's it's like okay, it's no more out there. It's no more their vision, but it's it's mine. I begin to own it. It's my vision now, and I, I want to be part of this. I, and I want to do it, and I want to live my life again, fulfilling this. So I own it, and every time. We hear it. You are you are enthused by it. Right? You are again um, revitalized. Hey, this is the task at that hand. This is what the Lord has. You know, I've, I've discovered the calling God, of God. This is how. Um, this is what the Lord has called me to do. This is what He has graced me, gifted me to do. And so you are, you know, enthused by it. You're excited, saying, "Okay, let me let me go after this now." Right. So uh, look at Nehemiah chapter two, verse seventeen and eighteen. We see something that is uh, 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 that is mentioned here, which will help us. Right. Seventeen. Then I said to them, "You see the distress that we are in. How Jerusalem lies waste, and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer be a reproach." And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. So Nehemiah talks to the people about uh, you know, the task at hand, the fact that the walls are broken down in Jerusalem. And, uh, and so he tells them, let's build the wall. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem. 
that we may no longer be reproached, you know. And uh, he also talks to them about what happened, how God's grace, our favor has been there, and how the king, uh, you know, king's words, he had spoken, and which means that the permission, the resources, all that the king actually uh, made available for this particular thing. So they also echoed, you know, the people when they heard it, they echoed the same thing they said. It resonated with them. They said, let us rise up and build. Okay, so they understood this is this is the task. Then they set their hands to this good work, which means that not only did they agree, not only did they say, okay, let us rise and build, but they followed through with action. Okay, so the uh, vision needs to be communicated um, to whoever needs to be part of it, and um, so so which is why you know in church we always have that as uh, something. Uh, in during the announcement, right? the church news announcement, every Sunday, people get to hear it. Um, so even in our worship team meetings and retreats and so on, we do it in creative ways. We may be like a puzzle, you know, we all the pieces of it, all the different phrases of it, we put it and then people need to, you know, put it together and, um, and then stand in this correct order, you know, each one having a word of that vision. Uh, statement and putting it together in the right order, and whichever team does it first. Right? So doing doing it in creative ways, doing it in fun ways, so that um, you know it's reiterated over and over again. So there are people who come, you know, who join newly, um, who who come to church, and then for them also it's a you know, it, it's reiterated. So vision needs to be communicated. Um, yeah, so this this part of vision, uh, this aspect of it is that the vision needs to be repeated. Okay, the vision statement needs to be repeated, reiterated, repeated. Um, like I said, you know, every time the worship team meets, we used to, you know, we, we reiterate it, we repeat it. Every time the church meets, the vision of the church, vision statement of the church is repeated. Why? Because as human beings, we tend to forget. Right. We get so engrossed in the daily things, in the weekly things, and things that we need to do. We get so engrossed in the work of ministry that we forget. We get so engrossed in the details, right? Um, like if it's a worship team, we get so engrossed in okay, what is the song list? Uh, you know, how do I sing this song? What are the you know what is the music? Uh, what are the chords? What is the tune? The melody? Um, you know, what is the dynamic of it? You get so engrossed getting into the details of it. I mean, it's good. We need to get into the details, but without forgetting the big picture. Because if you if you get into the details of it and we forget the big picture, then we might do certain things right, in a way. Well, for for example, it could be to well, I'm I'm here to lead the congregation. Oh, this is a fun song. This is an exciting song. Uh, let's do it. Forgetting that. The first thing is to please God's heart in understanding worship. So um, am I doing that? Or is it leading us somewhere, you know, not, not there, but somewhere else? Right? Um, so it enables us to just brings us back in alignment. Okay, this is what it is. Okay. So in a sense, yeah, it is um, like uh, we saw in Proverbs 29. Let me let's look at that verse. Um, Proverbs twenty nine verse eighteen. Um, that tendency to cast off that restraint um, is is always there when we get into the details of it. But the vision statement, the vision brings us back. Okay, so it's like uh, we we can say, okay, maybe it's it's restraining. Okay, it's it's helping us not to cast off a restraint. It's restraining, but it's a good way. In a good way, it's it's not to, you know, it's not to constrain us and restrict us. But if there is any restriction or constraining, it's in a good way, right? Uh, it is so that we might have focus. It's not to restrict any freedom in the spirit, not to curtail our liberty, but really to bring focus. So that in the long run, right, we are fulfilling what we are supposed to 
fulfill. So you see the importance of this, you know, um, of the vision statement, right? So, you know, as leaders, we need to get it in us, okay? We need to make sure that the vision statement that everybody in the organization, in the team understands, understands clearly what we are doing, or who we are, and why are we doing what we are doing, right? And where do we need to be? Right? So that everybody gets a strong grip of that. I don't know when I, when I used to work in, uh, um, oh, now this is okay. More to do with the you know the mission state mission statement, or uh, you know what we it's it's more to do with the details. But then I was I was working in this organization. I was in sales, and and I remember every morning we would have a a sales meeting, right? A meeting with the manager every morning, and every morning, uh, every day, right? This would be made clear. What is our target? Where are we right now? And what do we need to do in order to reach our target? And how much time do we have? Okay, every day for every person in the sales team, right? So this would be made clear. What is what is the target? Where are we? Where have you achieved? Now, where are we um, with regard to the target? Um, what is the distance yet to be covered? And how long do we have? How much time do we have to cover that? So it's clear each and every day. Okay, so we move on to the mission statement, right? What is the ministry activity? What do we do, right? And for whom do we do it? The people group, the target audience, and how are we going to do it, right? For example, our people church exists to disciple and equip believers in the Word and the Spirit to mature them into Christ, Christ-likeness, fulfill God's purpose for their lives and to have influence and impact for God's kingdom. So if we, this is slightly different from the vision. It's getting into the details of how and what do we need to do in order to fulfill that. Right? Discipling, equipping in the Word and Spirit, maturing into Christ-likeness, Right. Fulfill so that they fulfill God's purpose for their lives, and in turn have influence and have impact. In, in in turn, they become the salt and light for God's kingdom. So you see that it's broken down a little more details. Right. So it's about the mission. It's about the activity. It's about the daily things. It's about the weekly things. It's about what we need to do in order to reach there. Okay, so the answer to these questions, okay, why does your church or ministry exist? What does your church or ministry do? Um, now, those answers, though, I think we need to ask ourselves that question, ask our church, our team that question. Otherwise, it will be, you know, like, okay, I prepare a message, I share a message, uh, everybody hears that, and then we do some outreach, and we do some Bible study or fellowship, and we have the time, we have some fellowship dinner. You know, it, these all will be random things or disconnected activities because that is what a church is supposed to be doing. We are comparing ourselves with other churches and other, uh, you know, ministries, and okay, we're trying to replicate. Okay, this is what a church is supposed to be doing. Hey, monthly ones, do we have to do the men's group? We have. To, we need to have this women's group. We need to have this children's ministry, and all that. But it's not coming from that big picture or that big vision. Why we are doing what we are doing? Oh, that church is having something for, you know, uh, 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 a social cause or they're doing something uh, to feed the poor or something so we also need to do that they're doing something for working professions we also need to do so you know all that the doing part becomes very disconnected and random things like randomly done but if it flows from the mission vision statement and if it flows from okay this is what our mission is it's further broken down then we would have what we would call as goals and action plans, right? clear goals and action plans, which follow from the mission statement. So let's look at the mission statement again, right? So we saw 
what the big picture was to be salt and light to be influence and impact to be a voice to the nation to the nations okay so it talks about okay um, this is what we need to be or this is who we are and to these people you know to the to the city to the nation okay so bigger group and to the nations oh a very big group okay so this is what it is so this is the direction how do we do that and how do we do that and how do we get there well this is what we do we equip disciple mature people um, they will so that they discover god's call god's purpose for their lives and they in turn be the voice be the salt be the light right so in order to do that so how do we mature how do we equip right how do we disciple now that's further going into the details how do they discover god it's good to say uh, they, they need to discover can i do it on a sunday service uh, is that enough if i preach and teach and about how to discover or what what are some other things that i need to have in order to really achieve that right so then we get into the details of goals okay. so before we go into you know goals any any questions or anything that you want to clarify uh, based on what we discussed so far um okay. i guess it's it's fairly simple it's basic right right from the big picture we're just going into some of the details and uh, and it's an exciting uh, journey right um yeah uh, divya go ahead please yeah one one thing is i think it's a um, very straightforward uh, question like uh it's the whatever you you were telling about vision mission uh, this can be done in a personal level as well right mm. yeah yeah very true very true so uh, yeah it can be done at a personal level it can be done at a corporate level yeah uh, and, yeah within a family for a family yes very true yeah, yeah. so so it, it it's uh, so that's the thing you know many times we see the app we think the application is only uh, like if it's a formal organization uh, but it's not it's it's applicable at a personal level for our own lives and also you know even if it's a small unit like a family uh, it is applicable yeah yeah oh, one more thing is i i was just thinking about uh, uh, jesus's leadership if yeah. we go by you know what was the vision mission you know to define those mm -hmm. um, then i was thinking okay maybe uh, he had a big picture of course but mm. um every day morning he had this uh you know the time with her father right mm -hmm. he uh what what i used to imagine what i mean i imagine is maybe he's getting the plan for the day right mm -hmm. where to go what to do yeah. all yeah all these so there is an element of uh, uh element of the working of the holy spirit here right right so in that scenario um yeah uh, where does that fit in with jesus's ministry like the vision mission mm. yeah yeah so the, uh, no in uh, luke chapter 4 and verse 18 right um, i think it kind of describes the big picture um the purpose for his uh, being here right? he, he puts it very he, he actually read from the, from Isaiah, uh, and then he, 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 this is what he, no, let me just read it, Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 and 19, right? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, right? And then he goes on to say, to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then he said, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing saying that okay this is this is the reason i'm here this is why this is what is going to happen right and and also uh with, with regard to the details of the everyday thing he also made it very clear he said that uh 
whatever I see the father do, that I do. So he would isolate himself from everyone, right? And very early in the morning, or sometimes the whole night, um, to see what the father was doing, in the sense to get uh, to hear from him and to work out all the all the details, right? So he was, uh, and also constantly he would hear. Um, he would be led by his spirit, led by the Holy Spirit in order to do what he needed to do. So, um, so we see all that. We see both, right? The, that big picture. And then he says, you know, for this purpose I have come. So the whole thing of redemption was very, very clear. For this purpose that I've become, I've come here. And uh, so even in this, uh, uh, like we see it in Mark chapter 10 and verse uh, 45. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Okay. For, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Okay. So he said that. And also when he spoke to Peter, we know that he uh, you know, was saying that, okay, this is, this is the reason I have come. Uh, and then uh, that I will be. You know, I'm to give my life as a ransom. So I will be killed. I will be, but I'll raise again on the. I will be raised again on the third day. So Peter actually, you know, in that conversation, he said, "No, it cannot be. This cannot be your vision. You cannot do this." And then he says, "You know, this this is the things of. You're not mindful of the things of God, but you're mindful about the things of men." So he was very clear about the big picture and he communicated that also to the you know to the disciples okay, this is the reason I've come and in the daily things in what he did he got a, a blueprint of what he's supposed to do so in that he left us a great example right um, as believers what we need to do okay okay thank you thank you Pastor. right right okay so um so let's look at, uh, I think we have a couple of minutes. Let's just look at um, goals. So goals are specific things, specific objectives, right? Uh, in order to carry out the mission, specific objectives that we need to do. Okay, so uh, taking that example of uh, all people's church vision and mission statement. So we would say, okay, I need to equip the believers so that they can be salt and light, right? So how do we equip the people? How do we equip the believers? Um, you know, you know certain things okay these are the objectives we need to equip the believer we need to mature them uh, we need to you know reach out to the people we need to teach the people to be followers of christ now these are all objectives goals right and in order to do that there needs to be specific uh, specific activities or specific uh, tasks right which we call as a action plan so from vision from the mission statement from the goals we actually work out the action plan okay now none of it is um, you know when we look at all this and say okay you know it sounds very unspiritual you know we need to flow with the spirit yes right so there's uh, there's nothing wrong in uh, in in talking about this in having this uh, in fact it is uh, it is scriptural, but it becomes uh, a problem when God is not involved in this, or we are not involving God in this. If we shut the door on God, and then we plan out everything on our own, and then with our human understanding and intellect and everything, and then go to God and say, Lord, uh, we need your approval. Right? But the thing is to involve him, open the door and say, God, you know, uh, right from day one, right from the vision, to involve him and say, okay, God, you know, you give the vision. Okay, this is what we, we believe is the vision, but please clarify it. You know, please uh, renew it, clarify it, refine it so that we can go forward with uh, the mission, go forward with what we need to do, go forward with the objectives and then the actual action plan. The action plan would be you know, specific tasks, right? So we look at that. We look at the action plan, the work plan uh, in our next class. Um, but uh, I would say, you know, just go through the notes, um, read that again, and see if you have anything, any other thoughts, 
any other um, or maybe questions and doubts and we'll address it in our next class right okay fine thank you god bless we'll meet again